Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer on Webinar, where an expert from Google is going to talk about what dealers need to do to rock the new year. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. For anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that DealerOn is still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Does your website company guarantee you a 50% lift in leads or your money back? Maybe you should check us out at our gorgeous brand new DealerOn website at DealerOn.com. Also, DealerOn is going to be exhibiting and presenting at the upcoming NADA convention. And I'm not going to lie, we have the best booth around. Check it out for yourself. Stop by booth 1161, and while you're getting your NADA on, please check out the speaking sessions from these DealerOn executives. Now, I'm going to be there, so I hope to see you. Remember, it's booth 1161. I'll see you in NOLA. We have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have Kelly McNearney as our presenter today. Kelly McNearney is Senior Automotive Retail Strategist for Google, based in Venice, California. She coaches automotive clients on Google's wide range of solutions, including Google Search, YouTube, Google Display Network, programmatic mobile solutions, and more. Her mission is to help automotive retailers make the most of the web by reaching in-market shoppers with the right message at the right time. She's conducted keynote addresses at Digital Dealer, DMSC, and Google Automotive Retail Summit, and numerous OEM-specific conferences. Prior to joining Google, Kelly spent nine years at ESPN in customer marketing and sales, creating and selling multi-million multimedia sponsorship packages for sports advertisers. Kelly is a graduate of the University of Kansas with degrees in journalism and Spanish. She is a Think LA Person of the Year award winner and is the SoCal Regional Lead on Google Serve, Google's annual volunteerism initiative. And Kelly McNearney will uh, hopefully also be at NADA. Are we still thinking about that? <laughs> I will be there. She's going to be, be there. <laughs> I love it. So make sure you go and hunt her down at NADA and say hi to her there as well. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. Don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will be emailed to you later today for your reference, and feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends over at Google, oh, they're giving away a tremendous prize on today's webinar. One lucky attendee is going to win a shiny new Nest Cam to spy on Santa coming down your chimney. The Nest Cam provides 24-7 live video streaming and continuous recording of your home in 1080p HD right to your phone. Also comes with audio, night vision, motion and sound alerts, and yeah, it even has a remote control. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though, so stay tuned for your chance to win this sweet, sweet prize. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey. It's only three questions, so we'd ask you to please fill it out, because we're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want your opinion to be heard. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Kelly McNearney at Kelly McN. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. So let's get started while the expert from Google tells us all what dealers need to do to rock the new year. Kelly McNearly, oh, I'm so glad you're back. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me, Eliana, and for that wonderful introduction as always. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now last time you were here, you talked to us all about YouTube. Now today, you're going to talk to us all about how dealers can get the very most out of 2017, and I'm so glad you're here. And by the way, audience, Kelly is a newlywed. She got married two weeks ago, was it? And she hasn't even gone on her honeymoon yet. She said, nope, i got to do a dealer on webinar before I can even go on my honeymoon. So <laughs> without further ado, <laughs> why don't you tell the audience, by the way, congratulations, tell the audience all the things that we're going to be learning about today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, gratuitous wedding photo uh, instead of the typical professional headshot, just so I can get the most out of those flowers and dress and share them with everyone. You look stunning. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of money on that hair and makeup, so uh, that should be the result. Um, <laughs> totally worth it. Yeah, totally worth it. Anyway, so thank you very much. It was a really fun day. Yes, two weeks ago. So uh, I'm leaving 
Christmas night for my honeymoon to New Zealand. If anybody wants to send in some travel tips to New Zealand, that would be much appreciated. Uh, <laughs> in typical fashion, I have not yet planned where we're going. So, whoops. All right, so today YouTube, like you said, Aliana, in the last webinar, I did talk about YouTube. YouTube will make a cameo today. It is my favorite Google product. But we are going to talk about mobile, also some search extensions, new products that you need to know about, and then finally a little bit on YouTube at the end. So three main buckets of what you need to do to rock the new year. So let's get started. Objective number one, as promised, a little bit about mobile. Is your mobile site up to speed? Number two, we're going to conquer the world of ad extensions and make sure that you are using all of these free additions to your SEM campaigns that help your organic rank, improve your click-through rate, and give users better access to your site. And finally, become a YouTube star using video to connect with in-market shoppers. I'm going to show you a case study, a couple of case studies from dealers who are using YouTube to connect with shoppers and getting really, really great results. Then we'll end with the giveaway, a little Q&A, and call it a day. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, I have three numbers on the screen here. Is your mobile site up to speed? 6.9 seconds. Think in your little head. What is just 6.9 seconds have to do with a mobile site being up to speed? The answer is that is the average amount of time a mobile site takes to load in 2016. What is three seconds? You guessed it the amount of time a consumer is willing to spend for a mobile site to load. And 79% represents the number of people who will not do business with you again if your mobile site does not load in three seconds or less. Whoa. Yes. So consumers have high expectations of mobile devices. We have created a bit of a monster, and you yourself know the feeling as soon as you hit, as soon as you tap your screen, you want to see instant results. And if a user has to wait even three seconds, 79% of them will not come back to do business with you again. So I cannot emphasize enough to you, in 2017, the number one thing that you should focus on for your business is the quality and speed of your mobile website. We have another study here. So as you know, Google works with a ton of businesses. I am, of course, loyal. Uh, to automotive, but we do service a lot of industries, one of which is retail shopping. We have a study that shows in the retail industry, every one second that passes on a mobile site, 50% of shoppers will abandon the purchase. Every second, you lose half of the audience. So, again, I cannot emphasize enough how important it will be in 2017 for your mobile website to not only be high quality, but also be very, very fast. Now, it's not, it's not in my nature to just give you these scary stats and not help you do something about it. So, I would like to introduce to you this site, testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. This is Google's free tool to measure and monitor the speed of your mobile site. Testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is the interface that will appear once you go to testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. It's completely free. You just type in the website of your dealership, type that URL in there, and hit test now. This is what you will see. Just to make you feel better about yourself, if you get a score that's not ideal, Google itself only got a 97 on desktop speed. <laughs> but we did get 100% on mobile friendliness, so that's good. So you'll get something that looks like this for your website. Uh, you will have results on mobile friendliness. You'll also see mobile speed, and then finally your desktop speed. So it does also take into account your desktop speed. This is a free comprehensive score of the speed of your websites, both mobile and desktop. Now, we had a, a few people who wrote in. Jeff said, but we can't control the speed of our mobile websites. We have an automotive vendor website company who does that for us. And then Marty wrote in, uh, he missed that website URL for that uh, uh, website speed tester. Here you go, Marty. Testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. 
that's my site, .thinkwithgoogle.com. And a uh, really good point about you have someone else who's controlling your website design. However, that person is accountable to you. You are their client. And if your website, if they're not doing a good enough job creating your mobile website uh, or making sure that it's fast, there are things that you can discuss with them to make sure that that's true. And again, Google is not going to leave you high and dry on this one. Get your test results. And of course, you'll see green is good, yellow, not so good, red, time right. to have a discussion. Right. Uh, click, click on get my free report and Google will generate an extensive and free report that will tell you exactly what's going on with your website and what's slowing it down. Oh now, God. we did a study. <laughs> Wait, I'm just letting you know, I'm getting a slew of people who are writing in. They're like actually testing their websites right now. Oh, and good. they got good. known. How's it going? Well, let me just tell you, Lydia, for instance, she says, my mobile speed is 48 out of 100. When I bring it up with my website designer, they say mobile, friendly, mobile friendliness is more important than the speed, so the speed is low. Jessica wrote in, does it give you ideas on how to speed up your site as well? It does. It does. Great. Jessica, you're the one who's going to get helped. Mike says, it took my site too long to analyze. <laughs> oh, no. Mike, that is not a good sign. That's not a good sign. <laughs> um, Brooke has the same problem. She says, it says, my website took too long to analyze. I'm guessing this is not good. <laughs> and not then, great. Not great. And then Randy We'll see now how are they going to get how they going to get help. What do they have to do? Like change vendors to get their mobile site up, or I would just try again. Maybe uh, I would try that again later if it's taking too long to analyze. Maybe it's just a function of the tool. I don't know how many people are on this webinar right now, but if a lot of you are testing it right now, perhaps it's something to do with the tool. Um, I would try again, uh, maybe in a couple of minutes, and see if that works. If it doesn't work, then I would cons I would consider reaching out to your mobile site provider um, and share what you see now on the screen. So this is why marketers should care about mobile page speed and hopefully this Eliana also answers the first question about which is more important mobile friendliness or page speed. Um, to find this article which I highly recommend it's homework and reading especially given the interest in your mobile page speed thinkwithgoogle.com the same site where you're going to have the test done thinkwithgoogle.com there is an article called Why Marketers Should Care About Mobile Page Speed. You can find this exact article by just doing a search for Why Marketers Should Care About Mobile Page Speed once you go to thinkwithgoogle.com. So one more time, thinkwithgoogle.com, and in the search field, type Why Marketers Should Care About Mobile Page Speed. And as a result, you will get what you see here on the screen. You'll see this article. I highly encourage that you share your mobile speed results, that free report that Google is going to generate for you, as well as this article with whoever is responsible for designing your mobile website. Now what this article does is talk about an extensive study that Google participated in, a research study, with uh, an organization called SOSTA, and we analyzed 93 different contributing factors that go into what makes a consumer complete a shopping action on a mobile site. We analyzed thousands of sites on 93 different factors and have some really incredible takeaways for the real truth about what really matters to shoppers when they're on a mobile site. I'll give you a little sneak peek and the rest you can read on your own, um, but one thing came back from the study that was quite surprising is that sites with too many images actually had a higher bounce rate than sites with well curated and an appropriate amount of images. So often we think it's a mobile site, we should just put pictures everywhere. And what this site found was too many pictures was actually leading to confusion among shoppers and they didn't know which one to tap on, where to click to get what they wanted. So for a while, the industry has been thinking mobile websites should be very image heavy. This new research shows that mobile images are really important on your site, but too many of them, like most things, too much of a good thing starts to turn into bad. So I highly encourage this reading, especially for those commenters um, who were confused or not sure about what to do next. 
this has tips on exactly, it gets a little, you know, I, I recommend looking at it with uh, whoever's in charge of building and designing your site because it does get a bit technical on, um, on some mobile site creation terminology. So this is, this is reading that you should share with your mobile website developer. And then after that, hopefully you have a really sound strategy in place, you've done some fixes, rerun that report, and, and see how your mobile site has been able to improve. So there's your recommended reading. Okay. Because <laughs> that we have a lot of people who commented on that. And um, we'll have some more of those questions okay. coming at you during the Q&A session. How's that? Right now, okay, it looks great. like we're going to be doing our first of two poll questions. So your first poll question is on the screen now. We'd love it if you take part in our poll question so we know what's really going on at your dealership. We want to know how fast should your mobile site load in order to avoid losing customers. Now, yes, while well, you may have heard her say that, but how fast is your mobile site actually loading? So we want to know, do you think it's loading in less than 15 seconds, less than 10 seconds, less than 5 seconds, less than 3 seconds, or do you feel it doesn't really matter, the customers will wait? How fast is your mobile site loading in order to avoid losing customers? And um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, real fast, once again, my dear friend Kelly, um, some people are still asking for the URL for that site test tool off the top of your head. What is it again? Testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. Testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. So just so you know, thinkwithgoogle.com is uh, also going to be at the end of this webinar. You'll see that linked in the resources because that is a site that tells all about industry trends, marketing ideas, strategy tips. It's a way to kind of get a, a little bit of a marketing refresher or what Google is thinking about, what Google's working on. A lot of really great resources on there. Thinkwithgoogle.com. Okay. And this mobile test, mobile test can be found at testmysite.thinkwithgoogle. All right. I hope that helped you out for all of you people who are still asking for that URL. And now we are going to, <laughs> oh boy, people are still writing to me about this. Um, yeah, they've tried it. <laughs> they've tried it numerous times. It won't. Oh, that's a sin. Okay. Uh, let's close this poll and share the results. Okay. So only 3% of today's audience think that their site loads in less than 15 seconds. Another 3% says it loads in less than 10 seconds. 9% of today's audience say that it loads in less than 5 seconds. 86% of today's audience believes that their site loads in less than 3 seconds. And no one, of course, said the last answer. We all know it's important. So, Kelly, does that help you out? Thank goodness. Thank goodness. We know that it does really matter. The customers will not necessarily wait. All right. Um, excellent. Thank you all for, for answering that poll question. Now, if we're ready to move on, and I'm happy to take more questions about mobile page speed at the end, uh, subject number two is add extensions. So in order to get everybody on the same page, I realize some of you on here definitely already know this, some of you maybe not. So in order to get everyone on the same page, what is an add extension? Anyway, you see a definition here on the screen. Add extensions are just a way to not only make your ad bigger, on the page, but also to give the shoppers information that they want with one click. Now you see a creepy eyeball and a dollar sign at the bottom of the page because in addition to giving you more prominence on the search results page, ad extensions also give you more visibility, not just because it expands the size of your ad, but also because you can start to see which sub pages of your website people actually want to click on and you can get a little better sense of the behaviors that people are taking when they search for a given keyword. The dollar sign is there because adding ad extensions to your SEM ads definitely creates more value for you and you will see some stats in a moment about how click-through rates go up and cost per click usually go down the more ad extensions you have on your ad. So in order to rock 2017, I think it's really important that we all get on the same page about the importance of ad extensions. What do these things look like? Here you see three examples of ad extensions. On the left is what's called a review extension. A review ex 
attention is if you have a third party review from a semi-credible source that tells uh, a wonderful review of your product. You add that free extension into your SEM campaign under review extension. Now it does have to be a third party that Google can verify. So it cannot be a Facebook post from your mom saying you're the best dealer in all of the land. It has to be a review from a credible third party that Google can check with. So we will ask you to put the source uh, you see here in this example, exampleblog.com, so that users know that the person who was so impressed and bought all of those pounds of mushrooms was from exampleblog.com. So review extension is a really great, great, great way for you to brag about your dealership using a reliable third-party source and allow users to see that right there in the search ad. They don't even have to go to your website to find how great you are. They see right there in the ad and they're encouraged to click because you are wonderful. The second example is a location extension, something I am pretty confident most of you are already using. If not, this is the number one extension car dealers should be using in the United States because this gives users your exact location, which means they are one tap away from driving directly to your store. The location extension is also free. You just add your physical address here in the United States and users can drive directly to your dealership with one tap. And the third one at the bottom is called site link extensions. Site links are those four blue links that you see added to the bottom of your standard search ad. Now the example you see here is a bakery for dogs. Maybe Eliana is in the market for a bakery for dogs with your pup at home. Um, but this is, this is an example of, here's an example of how a dealer should use this. For example, service hours, sales hours, specials and coupons, book an appointment. So those are four examples of site links that I would recommend for car dealers as opposed to dog bakers. Um, this allows people to, with one click, so instead of going to your home page, as I would do if I tapped on Walter's Bakery for Dogs, by tapping on biscuits, I'm taken directly to the biscuits section of Walter's Bakery for Dogs website. So if you are short on leads and you'd like to try something to see if you can get a few more leads out of Google, a site link is a great way to do that and put a site link on there that says request information, contact us, something along those lines. And then with one click from the search results page, your shoppers can go directly to your lead submission form. So site links, another great way to add real estate to your ad and also drive people deeper into your website and to the exact page they want to go to. Uh, we did have a quick yeah. question that came in from Tony. He said, are those site link extensions also free? Also free. Great question, Tony. Also free. So all of our extensions are free. They are free to add to your campaigns. You only pay when someone actually clicks on your ad. So you still pay for the click, but you do not pay to add any of these extensions. This is what they would look like on a mobile screen. So this is a search in French because we're feeling global today. <laughs> Call out extension, structured snippets, review extensions, site link extensions, and location extensions. We talked about those final three. These are all great ways to just add more information to your ad and allow people to click directly into the page that they're looking for as opposed to being sent just to your home page. So anything that's important to you this month, if you have a tires event going on, if you have a year-end uh, seasonal sale, those are site link extensions are great ways to add that copy for free to your SEM campaign and then take users directly to the page on your site where they can learn more. Call out extension is just more information about your vehicles. So it's going to call out specific information for you, your vehicle and also the services you provide. Structured snippets fall under general headings. Um, the ones that apply to auto here are things like equipment or services, again. So look into these too uh, in, your, in your homework all just free, great ways to make your ads work harder for you and give more information to the customer so that you're more likely to get that click. 
Now you see a little teaser there at the bottom, try out the functionality of click to message, which is in beta, and I'm going to talk about that one in a moment. Before I do, I just want to also give you some really valuable information about extensions. Well, let's go back into the, uh, the history of Google. The way that you appear on the Google search engine results page in the paid portion, the advertising portion, the SEM portion, used to be your bid, what you were willing to pay, and your quality score. How relevant are you to the keyword the user is searching? Those are the two factors that went into whether or not you showed up in position one or position 11. Last year, Google made a change to the requirements and added in there the amount of extensions that you are using. We love extensions because users love extensions. They prefer ads with extensions on them because they have more information. It's not just the shiny blue link. They have a lot more information in them. So Google now shows favoritism in the auction towards campaigns that are using ad extensions. So a very easy way to make sure that your quality score is better and that you can bid slightly lower is to add extensions and that will fuel the algorithm that's determining where you fall in the results. So in summary, again, on that one, now the three factors that go into where you appear on the search page are the bid, the quality score, those are unchanged, and now also the quality of your extensions. Do you have site link extensions, review extensions, location extensions? All of those are now really important when determining where you're going to fall on the page. All right, not necessarily an extension, but also uh, a new cool sign up today free product from Google is what's called expanded text ads. We love acronyms here, so we call them ETAs. You see here on the screen, on the left, a standard text ad, and on the right, what a new ETA looks like. Essentially, an expanded text ad has just, wouldn't you guess, expanded the amount of text you can have in your ad. We are creative when naming products, aren't we? Expanded text ads give you more characters and longer headlines, again, so you can give as much information as possible to the shopper and encourage them to click on your ad. This is what it looks like when you want to create a new expanded text ad. You put in the URL, you create two lines of headline, path, and a description. Now, headlines can now be 30 characters each, which is a almost double what they used to be able to be. The description line can now be 80 characters total, much more than the old version. And the display URL field has been removed because we extract that from the URL uh, that you will input under final URL up there in the top box. So uh, an easy and another free way to make your text ads look better and get more clicks. Up to two fields with 15 characters each for the path fields. So that's yourdealersite.com slash Camry slash specials slash service. Um, and that's expanded text ads. So expanding the amount of text that you can put in your ads. We heard a lot of advertisers say, I can't get creative with my ad copy when you have such small limitations on how much copy I'm allowed to put. And we said, you know what, you've got a point. Also, smartphones are getting larger and larger. I'm holding a five and a half inch screen here. So there is more room now on mobile devices for more text. So we've gone ahead and created a new ad format that will allow you to put more characters in your ads, expanded text ads. Da, 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 the newest Probably the coolest and the most exciting new extension that we have is messaging extensions. So all of us know at dealerships, communicating with the clients once we have the lead can be a tricky and downright frustrating experience. Sometimes they pick up the phone, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they respond to our emails, sometimes they don't. We have now given car dealers a new way to directly text message with shoppers who are searching for you. So you see here on the left, Weston Times Square pulls up 
an ad for thereservationcounter.com for the Weston Times Square. You see this beautiful site has location extensions, they have site links, they have the call extension with the phone number, and now, new and improved, there is now a messaging extension. So this Weston Times Square ad says, got questions, send us a text. As soon as the user taps on that extension, got questions, send us a text, their phone op opens with a pre-populated message that you decide. I'll say that again. When they tap on the message extension, their phone's messaging app will open with a pre-populated message that you decide. So in this case, reservationcounter.com, the advertiser, said that, hi, I'm interested in a reservation, please text me back, should be the pre-populated message that is sent when the user taps on that messaging extension. You might want to change that. You might want yours to say, interested in a deal? Send us a text. And then the pre-populated message says, I'm interested in a deal. What can you offer me? <laughs> uh, so example on the right there, you see that now the advertiser in gray is saying, sure, what dates are you traveling on? And now we've taken the transaction into messaging. The reason we do this is because our research shows 65% of people are willing to text with a business in order to transact. And we know in the car industry as well that people are, people are willing and open to texting with a dealership to get as much information as they can without having to get on the phone or send an email. So Google has now launched messaging extensions. The charge comes when the user taps on the extension. So as, as most of our products are built and billed, you are charged when the user clicks, or in this case, taps on the extension. Also, uh, in addition to the pre-populated message, the user can also type their own question. If they don't want to send the pre-populated message, they can send their own messaging. They can add to the message that currently exists. The point is that you are now texting directly with a shopper who didn't even have to submit a lead form. They just tapped on your ad, and suddenly you're texting with someone who's interested. Ooh, pretty awesome. We think that could have a really, really big impact in 2017, and this is a way for you to rock the new year. I love it. And we, just so you know, got a lot, a lot of questions just about this. So we'll be coming up with all those questions when we get to the Q&A session. Please keep going, Kelly. You're doing great. Okay, great. So messaging extensions are brand new. I'm going to try to answer your questions as best as possible. Um, I look forward to hearing what you have to say about that. All right, so let's review the extensions portion. We talked about mobile page speed. That was section one. Section two is these ad extensions and how important they are to making sure that your Google campaigns are working as hard as possible for you and driving as many clicks as you can possibly take. So. Just so you know, increasing the number of extensions you have there consistently raises your click-through rate and also reduces your cost per click. So can't do much better than that, can we? Uh, more clicks for a lower cost when you increase the number of extensions that you put on your campaigns. Two there, you see that that increase of CTR is on average 10% higher click-through rate. Again, really consistent across the board, across industries, that ad extensions give a higher CTR to the tune of 10% higher click-through rate. And those are free, so why wouldn't you do it? I mentioned Google's algorithm really prefers extensions. They're better for the user, and we always want an environment that's better for the user. Um, so the, the algorithm is fueled by extensions, and it will show up to four based on the search. So you, I, I showed a screenshot earlier where the user, um, the user saw a location extension, a review extension, site link extensions. Google will show up to four extensions depending on what the user searches for, depending on the user's click behavior, depending on the keywords, depending on your website. So the more extensions you have in there, the better chances that you're showing a lot of information to the user and then also encouraging that click and taking up more room on the page. 
And finally, since the sale is our main objective and since getting into the dealership is the ultimate goal so that people can transact with us, always, always, always use those location extensions. All right, so that is our section on extensions. Third, you're going to be a YouTube star, baby. Uh, Eliana and I were talking about the movie The Room. This is the child actor from The Room who was, played a heartbreaking, heartwarming, depending on your, your state of mind at the time, role in the movie The Room last year who was nominated for an Oscar and I just thought it was so cute that he's like, I'm going to the after parties. So we're going to make you such a YouTube star that you too will be on the red carpet <laughs> going to after parties when you have become as famous as Eliana's Elf on the Shelf by using YouTube. <laughs> Now, in our last webinar, I talked a little bit about a new product from Google and YouTube called YouTube Director for Business app. It's an iPhone app called YouTube Director for Business that helps dealers and other business owners make YouTube videos with the tap of a few buttons. One of the hurdles that we hear from dealers at YouTube is, I want to make videos, I know videos are important, I know shoppers like to watch videos of my vehicles, but it's expensive. It requires a production company. It requires a lot of editing. I don't know how to shoot a video. And all of these are valid concerns. So we have come up with an app, YouTube Director for Business, that helps you create videos in a very easy, step-by-step -step manner. I'm going to show you a video on exactly how that works. We're here today to show businesses how quick and easy it is to make a video ad for YouTube. We're asking businesses to take part in the YouTube Director Video Challenge. So are you guys ready for the first part? Sure. Okay, so I want you to make a video about your business, film it, okay, edit it, Put it on YouTube in 20 minutes or less. Can I cook instead? No. <laughs> there we go. Go, go. 20 minutes in the clock. <laughs> All right. All right. No clue. Welcome to my market. Right? All right. Welcome to Pink. A lot of times we actually find. Eight minutes, Sarah. Oh, and I didn't press play. Those are all three-second videos? Right up. Do you know how to edit a video? Oh, no. I'm trying to figure that out. Can it be on YouTube in 10 seconds? Three, two, one. Oh, no. So, how was the video? Yeah, it was hard. Do you know when you shoot like this? Oh, it's terrible. I had no story. I had no concept. Now I know why I became a barber and not a director. <laughs> we did okay. You ready for part two? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. The exact same thing, but I'm going to give you some help. Okay? okay. So I'm going to give you this. The YouTube Director for Business app. And it has all these templates on here. And this is going to guide you through the entire video. What? Okay. And help you publish it to YouTube. Really? All right. So here's a template right here. Short owner story. 20 minutes on the clock. Okay. Go. Go. Describe yourself. Shut. You talk about some products. This is Dave, one of our awesome bartenders. Hi, I'm Nadia Geller. Welcome to Pink's Hot Dogs. I grew up in an old barbershop like this. Shot five. Explore what we have to offer. A variety of beautiful things for your home. Perfect. Oh, we're already at editing. There's nothing to edit. We nailed it. We're 10 minutes. That's amazing. Oh, Soundtrack to make the film. I'm ready to publish. All righty. This was a lot easier. One, two, three. Oh, yes. So easy. Like a big budget. Woohoo! So much better. I think that was great. Yeah. How exciting. They walked you through it and gave you tips. Steps one, two, three, four. It was like as easy as ABC. It was designed well. Instant commercial. I mean, that's priceless. The app works as the director. Great. And how much did it cost you? Nothing. So easy. And then you can just publish it. We can use it as paid advertising on YouTube. All around. Yeah. Making a great video. Let's go play the puppies. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, puppies. Aww. All right, I'm just going to stop you right there. That was like the coolest thing I have seen in a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> that was really awesome. <laughs> oh, good, good. I'm so glad you liked it. Um, those are real business owners. I live in Los Angeles, and Pink's Hot Dog, those are the real owners of Pink's Hot Dog. So if those people who own a hot dog stand can, can make a YouTube video in less than 20 minutes using this app, I know all of our digital savvy dealers can do even even better. 
So I'm glad you liked the video. That's a real, that's not fake, that's real. We went to those real business owners and asked them to make a video. Um, I love the part where they say, you know, when you hold the phone like this, <laughs> my mom and even myself, I'm not, I am, I am, I have technology flaws like everybody else. Don't tell Google that, but I do. And holding the phone vertically is not a good way to shoot video. And the app tells you that. You, know, you open the app and it says like, uh-oh, we see you're holding your phone the wrong way. So it is a literal step-by-step -step director in your pocket. And it really does say things like, in the first few seconds, introduce yourself. Say your name and the name of your business. It is a godsend. And you can see here, uh, WordStream blogger Aaron says, YouTube just rolled out the answer to your prayers. So <laughs> on, uh, on iOS, in the App Store, this is what it looks like. It's the icon with the red square with the little white director chair. It's called YouTube Director for Business. Now. Um, little egg on our face. It is not currently available on Android. Uh -oh, small oversight, but uh, Android version is coming. So you know now, when? We actually have people who wrote in about that. Philip, for instance, said, do you know the release date for the Android version of the YouTube director? So obviously there's definitely a market for it. Any ideas? There definitely is, and sadly, Philip and everyone else, there is no date yet. But once we get one, um, you'll be the first to know. It's just they have not yet committed to the date of when it will be available on Android. I don't know how that's possible because we are Google. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. I was going to say, because I use Android, and now we have a lot of people writing, and I only use Android. Android rocks. Why don't they have it for Android? So yeah, uh, it's coming. It is, it is coming. I promise it's coming. It's a big who knows, priority. People. It might be a Christmas miracle. Just sit it tight. It might be. <laughs> but it will be in 2017, so you will, uh, you will be able to rock the new year in 2017 with this app on both iOS and Android. Okay. So. Uh, if you do not, if, if you are an Android user like myself, borrow the iPhone of someone in your dealership and, uh, and, and use the iPhone for now, and then um, you can switch to the Android version once that is released. All right, now how is this thing working? I have a little dealer case study here for you. This is Steve Sansone from Sansone Mazda on the East Coast. And he used YouTube Director to create a video specific to a lead that he received. Now, I work at YouTube and I have a salary, so I am interested in selling you all, all of you lovely people, advertisements. But this is not the time and the place for that. Today, we are talking about all the free stuff. So it's free to test the page, uh, the speed of your mobile page. It's free to add all of those ad extensions. And it is free to create and post a YouTube video. Someday, I would love for you to run ads against your YouTube videos. But that's not what we're talking about today. We are talking about free videos and a free way to use them. And what Steven Sansone did is what I think is definitely a huge way to rock the new year in 2017 because Steven used YouTube Director to make a lead form response video and I'm so excited about it. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, you can see here on the slide the regional marketing manager for the East Coast region of Mazda says that there was a customer who lived closer to other Mazda dealerships who were offering lower prices than Steve Sansone, but because of this video, this helped Steve convince the customer to buy from him. And the customer told him as such, I'm getting lower prices from dealers closer to my house, but I love the way you communicated to me through the process. And Steve says communicating to the customer with video was a major way that he did that. So let's take a look at Steven's video. Again, this was made on the YouTube Director for Business app. And take a look at how he is responding to an online lead using video. Hey, Mr. O'Donnell, Steve Sansone, Sansone Mazda. Wanted to introduce myself and introduce you to your new 2016.5 Touring CX-5. This particular 2016.5 CX-5 is going to come with the Bose surround sound system the moonroof package, and heated seats, as well as all-wheel drive. 
As a Sansone customer, you receive one year of oil changes complimentary, as well as lifetime car washes. Sansone Mazda has been family owned and operated for over 57 years, and we're looking forward to making you, Mr. O'Donnell, our next oil customer. So to you, Mr. O'Donnell, we're looking forward to meeting you and giving you the experience that you deserve. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there again. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> How about that? That I mean, was he, really good. How innovative of him to think to do that. He used the customer's name. I don't know if you guys saw, but there was a, I'm sorry, I'm on a, I'm on a I'm jumping ahead on the slide, so we'll just, we'll just go back. Um, yeah, on the windshield of the car, he had a sign that said Brian O'Donnell. He had the customer's name on the windshield. He called him Mr. O'Donnell several times during the video, and that was quick. It was just a quick, here's the vehicle, look at the moonroof and the surround system. Um, he talked about how he'll get free service for a year if he buys from Sansone Mazda. You have to imagine that took him just a couple of minutes to create using that app and he closed a sale because of it. So I highly recommend one of the best things to do for 2017, whether you use the YouTube Director app or not, is to include YouTube videos in your lead responses. We have seen, and now I will show you this slide, um, we have seen a Ford dealer in LA who did a similar thing. It is not Lasco Ford, if anyone knows Lasco Ford, I just grabbed this screenshot from YouTube. This dealer is based in LA. And I'll just tell you guys a quick story. I presented at the Lincoln dealer meeting over the summer in Las Vegas. And the subject of my presentation was, of course, YouTube, because it's my favorite thing in the world. And um, in that presentation, I said something similar to what I'm saying to you all today, which is, we think that online video in your lead handling is a great way to close sales. It's better than the form emails that we send out. It's better than the like, I hear you're interested, I'm open at nine. It's a way to talk to the customer. It's a way to show them your inventory, show them your smiling face, and make them feel like you are listening to them. If they submitted a lead for a Ford F-150, boom, here's a video of a Ford F-150 on my lot, and here's this wonderful, nice polo shirt wearing salesperson who's going to help get you into that car today. So video is a wonderful way to connect with people before they ever step foot in your dealership. So I said as much at the Lincoln dealer meeting in Vegas, and then a couple of months later, I was meeting with the Ford team out here in the LA region and talking about this exact same thing, using videos in lead handling. And a gentleman raised his hand and said, I was at the Lincoln dealer meeting when you told us all to do this. And the way that he said it made me shake in my boots. I was fully prepared for him to say, you're a crook and a liar. And <laughs> oh, he did on, not. Kelly. <laughs> he did not. Instead, what he said was, I have some people in my internet sales division who knew how to do this. So they took the app. They went out to our floor. They took walk-around videos and put them in the leads, and you see there on the slide, he had a 400% increase in his close rate from his online leads, and the only thing he did differently was add a link to a YouTube video to the email. 5% is pretty low, so he was in trouble. 20% is pretty great. So I hope all of you are already at 20% and we'd like to take you to 30 or 40% by including video. Now, I have received some questions about this when I talked about it in, in recent history. And one was, well, if you attach a video to email, sometimes it goes to spam filters. So I want to be clear about what we're recommending. We are not recommending that you download and attach a video to an email. We are recommending that you copy the link to the video on YouTube and paste that into your email. So use the app, upload the video to YouTube, and then send them that link. A user is much more likely to click on a YouTube link than they are to watch a video attachment. Um, also, you can upload the video privately if you don't want all the world to see every one of your lead handling videos. You can upload them privately to YouTube so that only people who receive the link can actually view the video. Um, that's a way to keep your, keep your videos private um, 
And also if I'm searching on YouTube, I don't see 300 videos of you saying, hello, Mrs. McNearney, hello, Mr. Herbst, hello, Mr. O'Donnell. Um, you can keep some authenticity there. So upload them privately. Just copy and paste the link into the email. Do not attach a video file to an email. So really great results there for lead handling. Again, everything we've just suggested to you is 100% completely free. Doesn't cost you anything to make a video, upload it, and paste it into an email. Eliana, it's time for our next poll question. I love it. All right, last poll question is on the screen now. We'd love to know, how many videos do you make in a month? Now, we're asking you to add all the videos in, including advertising, sales, leads, service, you name it, all of those. How many videos do you make in a month? Please select one of the following. Is it less than 10? Is it about one a day? Do you make several a day? OMG, I'm a video ninja. Or, um... I'm going to start tomorrow. <laughs> Once we get a majority of the votes in, we will close this poll and share the results and keep those great questions coming in for Kelly McNearney. We're going to be uh, closing up the presentation soon and getting to that Q&A session very shortly. All right, votes are still coming in, so let's do this question one more time. How many videos do you make in a month? And yes, we are asking you to kind of add in all of the videos that your dealership might put out. So advertising videos, sales videos, leads videos, and of course any videos that you might do for service. Please select one of the following less than 10 a day. I'm sorry, less than 10 in a month, about one a day, several a day, you are a video ninja, or you know what, video's not really been my thing, but you know what, I'm going to start tomorrow. Kelly, when you're ready, I will close this poll and share those results. I and ready. Done. Here we go. <laughs> All right. The majority of today's audience, 54%, say that they make less than 10 videos a month. About 11% of today's audience say they average about one a day. Another 11% of today's audience say they do several a day. Only 3% of today's audience are ready to proclaim that you're a video ninja and the remaining 20% of today's audience say they're gonna start videos tomorrow. Wonderful, tomorrow will be a great day. You know, this doesn't make me sad. This makes me very, very happy to see that 74% of you are doing less than 10 or zero um, is great news because this is something that you can start doing and it's really gonna have a big impact. So I don't feel sad that you're not already doing video because I am so excited now about the new opportunity for you in 2017 to start doing this and see your internet close rates go through the roof, to see the traffic to your site, your walk-in traffic. If you want it, I got it. All sorts of data that shows that when people are shopping and they see dealership videos, they become incredibly more likely to do business with you. People love, love, love to watch videos while they are shopping for a new car also while they are researching service. So the fact that you're not doing them means great news. This is a really easy thing to start doing that is going to um, really have an impact on your store's business in the coming year. So I'm actually more encouraged that 74% of you are not doing video. The three of you who are video ninjas, wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that as well. Um, and I would like to refer you to something called the YouTube Playbook for brands. You can just Google that, YouTube playbook for brands. I now, see what you did there. Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> just Google it. <laughs> Google it. Google it, guys. That's how I find all my information, too. Um, the YouTube playbook for brands is not light reading. It is an intense, long, thick manual on things like metadata tagging and description fields. So it is definitely a, a playbook that I only recommend for those video ninjas, the 3% of you who maybe are ready to take your video to the next level. Um, for the rest of us, I suggest using that app, creating and uploading videos for free on YouTube, and then starting to use those in lead handling, starting to put those on your website, put those videos on your social media outlets, uh, and then eventually when you're ready, you can start to advertise using those videos as well. 
and use YouTube TrueView pre-roll um, to target people in your market who are who are shopping for a car and you want to get your video message in front of them to show them how wonderful you are. So great news for 74% of you that there is an easy and actionable way to do better business in 2017 and it's using video. Love it. All right, now I just talked to you about the YouTube playbook for brands. Um, I also talked about thinkwithgoogle.com. That's the third resource you see there. Thinkwithgoogle.com is where you're going to find testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com to test your mobile page speed. Thinkwithgoogle.com is also where you're going to find that recommended reading of why marketers should care about mobile page speed. You can find that by searching on thinkwithgoogle.com. Um, two other things I wanted to recommend as resources. First is Google best practices. And again, I'm doing it again, Eliana. Google it. Just Google <laughs> Google best practices. And you will see a link that will bring you to um, our blog site and also a way for you to sign up for the best practices newsletter. Now, I receive the Google best practices newsletter. It does not come more than once a month, so it doesn't inundate you. And right away in the subject line of the email, you can tell if it's something you're interested in or not. I will admit that some of them come to me and I delete them immediately because it will say something about programmatic media buying for brands. And I know that is not what our dealers are talking about. The majority of our dealers are talking about. So I delete that right away. But many times, it's something like the messaging extension beta or using site links to increase your SEO. So there is a lot of good information in those newsletters. So you can get that information one of two ways. One, just Google, Google best practices, go to the site and peruse. The other way is to sign up for that newsletter and have it come directly to your inbox. And I have a, I have a clickable link here that you obviously can't click on right now. So another way to find it before you get the handout from Eliana is just to Google AdWords best practices newsletter. That Google, it really does work. <laughs> All right, so those are your suggested resources, things I hope that you will read over the holidays. I would love to take your questions if you have them once you have read those things. If there are things you want to discuss about what you see there, let me know. But before then, here's your homework. Action items. One, seems like many of you have already done this, so congratulations, you teacher's pet. You can cross this off the list. <laughs> Test your mobile site. Make sure it's up to the speed of 2017. Now, for those of you who were having trouble, it couldn't analyze your site, um, I and, you, and you've tried and retried, I suggest you talk to your mobile page developer. Uh, it's not often that I hear that it can't analyze someone's site. Also, are you are you putting weird, funky, uh, do you have HTTP, do you have M dot? You don't need to do any of that. You can just put the root domain dot com. So if you're putting in www dot, I don't know if that would have an impact, but you don't need to do that. Uh, so that's that's that part. Test your mobile site. Number two, add those extensions. So go extension wild because we will serve up to four of them. And the more extensions you have, the better your likelihood of serving at the top at position number one. And also remember your click through rate will go up an average of 10% and your cost per click will go down because Google likes extensions, so it increases your quality score, which means you can bid less. So higher click-through rate, lower cost per click, and taking users to the part of your website that they really want to visit. Finally, lights, camera, you! Use YouTube <laughs> to connect with shoppers who love video. And by the way, that's all shoppers. We had a 220% increase in video watched by car shoppers this year. So in 2015, there was 200, sorry, 2016, 220% more time spent watching car videos while shopping for a new car. So people love to watch videos while they're shopping for a car. They love to watch videos while they're researching service. So give them the answers that they're looking for. Otherwise, your competition will. Are we ready, Eliana? Are we ready for We're our... so ready. We have so many great questions that came in from the audience for you, Kelly. So take a sip of water. Before we get to the Q&A session, I want to ask the audience, hey, 
you've got a question for Kelly McNerney from Google, now's your chance. Get that question in so we can get it addressed for you as soon as possible. Also want to direct your attention over to the handouts section of your GoToWebinar interface. In there you will see one very valuable handout. Yes, it was the slide deck that Kelly McNerney used today. It has a lot of great information as you already saw. So if you'd like, now's your chance. Download that handout. Of course, it's free of charge. And you also have until the end of this broadcast to get that handout downloaded. All right. So uh, a lot of great information in there. I highly recommend you get their, your copy of Kelly McNearney's slide deck for yourself. All right. Now, before we get to your awesome questions, thank you, audience. You gave me so many great questions. We got a little bit of fun to take care of. That's right. It's that time. If you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, I announced that our good friends over at Google, they're giving away a tremendous prize on today's webinar. And for this, Kelly, we can turn on our webcams now so they can see our incredible surprise when we figure out who is going to get this question correct. All right. Um, okay. One lucky webinar attendee is going to win a shiny new Nest Cam. It's going to help you spy on Santa coming down your chimney. The Nest Cam provides 24-7 live video streaming and continuous recording of your home in 1080p HD right to your phone. It also comes with audio, night vision, motion, and sound alerts. And yeah, it even comes with a remote control. So get ready, get to your keyboards. First person to write in the correct response to our giveaway question is going to be winning this awesome prize today. Good luck everyone and no, this was not covered in today's presentation. So either you know it or you're going to have to Google it. <laughs> Good luck everyone. This is a great question though. I'm ready to Google it. I'm ready. Good luck. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Last month, a film called Lion like after an animal, Lion, was released starring Nicole Kidman, Rooney Mara, and Dev Patel. The movie was about a boy lost from his family at the age of five. What Google product is prominently featured in the film and helps the boy reunite with his family 25 years later? Oh my God, somebody got it right. No, no, yes, somebody got it right. Well, 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 congratulations. Let me see, I have to go all the way across the screen. Kristen Goff, Kristen Goff, you are our winner. Yes, the correct answer was Google Earth, which by the way, I love. Uh, Kristen Goff, congratulations. I don't know if you have ever been a winner before on a dealer on webinar. I know everyone wanted to win. No, it's not rigged. <laughs> You people. All right. Kristen Goff. Let me know what dealership you're from. Also need your mailing address so our good friend Kelly McNearney can send out that cool prize to you as soon as possible. She says thank you. And she's going to let me know what dealership she's from any second now. Hey, but listen, we had one really cool prize today. But you know what? I know not everyone can win a prize when we come and do these webinars. But it's okay, because you know what? Come on back to another Dealer on Webinar, and who knows? That could be the day you win a cool prize on a Dealer on Webinar. But for right now, we're going to congratulate Kristen Goff from Wendell Motors. Still no idea where that is, but she's going to tell me any second now. And <laughs> we're going to thank our good friend, Kelly McNear, uh, and our friends over at Google for their incredible generosity. Ah, she's in Spokane, Washington. Nice. Not too bad. Not too far from you, right, Kel? I mean, Not too far. I'll drive it up to you. Well, maybe I'll Closer fly. than Jersey. So, <laughs> closer. Congratulations. Um, you guys know the correct answer was Google Earth. Google, Google Earth was the product prominently featured in that film, which is based on a very true story about a young boy who was raised in India. Can I tell this story right now, Eliana? Sure. The right time? It's your webinar. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in that case. Uh, a young boy who was raised, born and raised in India until he was age of five, and he and his brother were at a train sta station looking for coins and food, and he found his way onto a train, fell asleep, and the train stopped a thousand miles from his home, where he got off the train and knew no one, didn't know the name of the town he was from, had no way to find his way home. He was eventually adopted by an Australian family who moved him to Australia 
Nicole Kidman. Or, <laughs> Nicole Kidman plays the adopted mother, and he was uh, still always a little bit preoccupied with finding his family for obvious reasons. So he used, when Google Earth came out, um, he would spend every single night scouring train stations using Google Earth to try to remember the train station nearest his home. So he remembered there was a water tower, he remembered there was a bridge overpass, and he spent three years looking at Google Earth every night, looking at the entire country of India to try to find his home. He eventually found it using Google Earth satellite imagery and reconnected with his birth mother 25 years later. That is, it's giving me chills. That's such a crazy, awesome, amazing story. Um, it's a real story. I, I have to go and check out this movie. I'm, I'm just curious if Kristen, did you know the answer because you saw the movie or you were just guessing? I'm just curious. Kristen, when you get yeah, a chance, yeah. write on in and let me know. All right. Um, Google Earth. Not just for looking to see where, where you live right now. <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> Which we all do, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's get to some of these questions. You ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Oh. I'm going to not. Can I stop presenting so I can? Sure. Do whatever you want. Um, okay. By the way, Lydia, Lydia was the only person who sent in any suggestions for you, uh, for your honeymoon, for when you go to New Zealand. She said, visit, she said, visit all the L-O-T-R places. No idea what that means, but that's what she said. Okay. I don't know. L-O-T-R. I have no idea what that means. Okay. Lydia was one of those people earlier on in the presentation who actually tested her mobile site speed when you told everyone to. She says, my mobile site speed is 48 out of 100. And when I bring it up to my website designer, they say mobile friendliness is more important than speed. So who cares if the speed is low? <laughs> I would say, Lydia, you don't have to choose one or the other. It is 2017, and you can have both. So I would tell your mobile developer that, yes, while mobile friendliness is very important, that is table stakes. Of course, your mobile site should be mobile friendly. Then if you want to rock the new year instead of get punched in the face by the new year, <laughs> your page also needs to be really fast. So you, you need a web developer, a mobile developer, who's not going to make you choose one or the other. You need a mobile developer who's going to say, absolutely, I can make a site that's mobile friendly and also fast. Thank you very much, Lydia. Best of luck. All right, next question comes to you from Gary. We're going to still talk about site speed for a little bit, okay? Gary said, my desk speed is only 17. Is this just an issue with my desktop and has nothing to do with the actual website? He said his desk speed is only 17. Yeah, no, it do, it's not your desktop speed. It's, it's the speed of your desktop site that is being measured there. Oh, so, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so that so means that Gary is, needs help, right? That means Gary needs help. That means, and again, download the free report, and it will diagnose exactly where you need to to make some changes. It will it's it will literally tell you like these are the things that are slowing down your page. So it will give you an analysis of of why you're giving a 17 and not a not a 97. Keep in mind though, guys, like uh, Google got a hundred, a ninety. 97, I think, yeah. 97. Google got a 97 on desktop, and all it is is a bar that says Google. So do not expect that you're going to get a 97, but uh, but we need higher than a 17. <laughs> so download the free report. It will tell you exactly what's going on there and what you need to change. Okay, very cool. Okay, <laughs> Gary, good luck. Just to let you good know, luck, Kelly, yeah. um, I don't know. I didn't have my my geek hat on. L O T R means Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh God! They want That's you to be, duh, I know. We should have known that. <laughs> oh God! So visit Sorry, all the L O T R sites. <laughs> you know, okay, for the people in the know. <laughs> yes, Canterbury, I think, is where Lord of the Rings was. I will. I will. L O T R. Right, cool. okay. By the way, Kristen, our winner today, she said she didn't see the movie. She Googled it. She said she's very sorry, but she promises to watch the film. <laughs> no, I don't watch it. Watch it if you want. It seems kind of emotional. <laughs> All right, very cool, Kristen. By the way, you are going to be getting your prize directly from Google headquarters from Kelly McNearney. All right, so uh, check the mail for that. Okay, next question 
comes to you from Randy. I believe this one, he was talking about um, the site link extensions. And he says, I have added these, but I don't know when they appear. And can I specify only site links? Can they all be shown so they will all show at the same time? That's from Randy. OK. Um, nope, you do not know when they appear. It, it varies by user. So Eliana and I could be sitting next to each other. We could search for the exact same thing right now, and we would see different results. So that is the, the beauty and the pain of, of searching for yourself in the wild. Um, we don't recommend that as the best way. Because keep in mind, if I have been going to websites for the last three months, going to a bunch of car websites and dealership websites, I'm going to get a very different ad experience than someone who is searching for their very first car. So Google tries to cater the experience to these individual specific user, so no two people are ever going to see the exact same thing. So can you know when your extensions are serving all of the time? No, because we don't know what each individual person what their experience has been and, and what the algorithm has decided would be the most beneficial ad for them at that time. Um, the second part of the question, you can decide which site links you want to serve, um, but you cannot say, I want all four of these to serve all the time. That's Google's call. Google will decide. For example, and this is, a, this is an extreme one, but if I'm searching for a coupon, um, maybe a location extension is not as relevant to me. But if I'm searching for your dealership and a city name, then your location is really important to me. Or if I'm searching for your dealership and directions, a location extension is very important to me. So Google will determine which extensions are served at which time. Your role and your the impact you can have is making sure that you give Google a bunch of choices from which to pick. So the more extensions you have in there, and, and I say go wild, but um, extensions for the sake of extensions isn't helping anybody close any business, so we need to make sure that those are well written and relevant and, uh, and high quality. So, but the more of those quality extensions you add, the more likelihood you have of, of those serving in multiples on specific searches. So a little bit of you got to put trust in Google that we're going to serve the right things at the right time to the right people. But we need you to give us the ammo to do it. I love it. All right. Randy has a follow-up question, which actually doesn't have to do with um, the site links, extensions. This one is about the text messaging. All right. So now we're getting to all the questions about the text messaging, all right? Okay. So Randy was the first one to write in about text messaging. He says, does the text message have to go through a Google number first? This one's going to be tricky for me because, no, no, the answer is no to that one. Um, okay. And if you're using a third party, um, if you're using a third party messaging company, we are compliant with third party messaging companies as well. So no, it does not need to be a Google number. All right, let's get to more of these text messaging questions. Um, these are going to be hard for me because this one is really new, but I'm going to do the best I can. That's all we can ask. All right, Mike, <laughs> Mike's, Mike's question says, can the messaging extensions be fed into dealer CRMs? That's an, actually a really good question. And if it can't, <laughs> when can that be done? Because that is a really good question. Yeah, so, so Mike wants the actual text message content fed into the CRM or the numbers or something? Well, so that they have a way to track the conversation that they've had with somebody who shows mm -hmm. interest in their product or their company. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the CRM is fine. So. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. like a good idea. Um, though, <laughs> the, I, know that, <laughs> I know that in the AdWords reporting, um, you will see, you'll be able to monitor like the, the response rates for your text message extension. But as you guys know, Google is crazy about privacy, so I'm not sure that we would actually fork over the person's individual phone number, but I'm going to owe you some follow-up on that one because um, I don't know the answer to that. All right, fair enough. Mike, thank you for the great question. Thanks, um, Mike. Sorry, I don't know, but I'll find out. It's been a while since we had a question that came in that stumped a presenter, so I'm just letting you know, Mike. Oh, yeah. I had an award to give you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lydia wanted to know: Does the text messaging feature give an opt-out option for people, you know, customers who use it? 
That one's from Lydia. Well, yeah, they only get the text message if they tap on text message. So they've opted in by tapping on the text message extension in your ad. That is an opt-in action. Okay, so there's no there's there's no need for an opt-out because it's not like the dealership is going to be like sending them ads and trying to contact Correct. them. Other than correct, you can't just think of it as like. Giving. Gotcha. So it's like it's kind of like live chat, but through your text feature. Because if I yeah. do a live chat with somebody, they don't have any of my information unless I give it to them. And then once I hang up with that live chat, they don't keep contacting me, right? Right. The okay. user has to has to open uh, has to tap on the messaging extension, the pre-populated message that you select opens, mm -hmm. and then they have to hit send. So they've actually taken two actions to send you that text message. So they have opted in twice before we fork them over to you. Gotcha. All right. Great question, Lydia. All right. Some more great questions coming your way. Sit tight. You, you got a ton more questions. All right. So here we go. Next question comes from Matt. Matt says, is the messaging extension compliant with business texting laws? For example, can you opt out as a customer? Is the message delivered to the business via Hangouts or sent right to a mobile number? Thanks. It's sent right to a mobile number. And of course, we are compliant with all of the, oh. Hey now. Energy saving lights. Energy <laughs> saving lights. Okay. Uh, it's sent right to the mobile number, and yes, we are of course compliant with all of those um, legal ramifications of texting consumers. Love it, Matt. Great questions. Thank you so much. Keep them coming. All right. Next question comes to you from Marty. I think we addressed this. He says, "Is this app only for iPhone, but not for Android?" I think he sent this in for the texting, but maybe he did send it in for. Um, the the YouTube video director. Okay, so for YouTube director, it's iPhone only for now. Android's coming mm -hmm. for the messaging extension, both platforms and even Windows. Oh, love it! Oh, he says thank you. All right, You're welcome. Next question comes in from Miguel. Hi, Miguel. That's that's my husband's Latin lover name. All right, so Miguel says I don't find the YouTube director here in Chile. You're 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 in Chile. Holy moly. <laughs> he says, is there a way? Can I still get it? Can you send me a direct link or an invitation? Unfortunately, it's a U.S. only for now. In Canada, I think Canada this month. So not yet available in Chile, but we do have plans to expand globally. So there is no link I can send you, um, but come visit us in the U.S., download it on your phone, then go back to Chile, have some really good wine, and then uh, start making videos. If you don't have access to the app, you can, of course, just use your smartphone to make a video. Mm -hmm. um, and you can even go to YouTube, Miguel, and look at YouTube director videos on YouTube to kind of get a sense of what the app would do for you. So do your research on YouTube director, the app, and then create your own videos just using your smartphone. Miguel, thank you so much for the great question. We wish you the best of luck, sir. All right, next question uh, is from Lydia again. Lydia says, Ford requires a reply to be sent within 15 minutes of when they get a lead. What should we say first and then follow up with the video? <laughs> okay, so remember we talked about Mr. Sandstone, which, by the way, very interesting for all of you guys to know. I saw the picture of Mr. Sandstone in her slide deck I said he looks like he's from New Jersey <laughs> and she's like he is from New Jersey I was like yes I knew it <laughs> that's good Jersey radar on here I, I didn't know that that there was a Jersey radar in me but hey all right so if Ford requires an answer to a lead within 15 minutes and we could get this video made within 20 first of all a is it acceptable but two um should we send them an email first and then follow up with the video or would you say hey just make this video it's gonna this is gonna be the the closer for you okay so I have two I have two answers to that if oh. the lead contains a specific model that the customer is looking for then I think the response has to be the video of the model I really do and 15 minutes is tricky um, Lydia, I, I rely on you to say, like, how many leads are you having to respond to a day? Is that even possible? Could you jump up from the desk and go do that in 15 minutes? Um, if you decide it's not possible, 
then I would recommend sending an email to say, I'm going to follow up with you by the end of the day with a video of this vehicle. And then take the next hour or whatever you need to then go make the video and send it by the end of the day, by the afternoon, end of the morning, right, right. whatever it be. But ideal state would be the very first communication they get from you when they have asked about a specific model is a video of that model. Okay, Lydia, I, I hope just that... came up with another idea. What? You could. <laughs> <laughs> you could have a video like maybe once a week you make a stock video that says, "Hi, thanks for reaching out to us. We appreciate you considering us here at uh, I think Lydia was from was she from Wendell Motors?" Uh, no, that was our our winner. Oh, that was Kristen. our winner. Kristen. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Lydia could say, oh, Lydia's from a Toyota dealership. You could say, welcome to Lydia Toyota, where we offer X, Y, Z. What are your big selling points in the area? Um, so you could put sort of a generic video in the first 15-minute response, but then again, follow up with the, the model-specific video. All right. These are all excellent ideas, Kelly. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, few more questions coming your way. We're getting through all of them very quickly. Okay, next question comes to you from Tony. Tony says, will privately kept, uh, will private, wait, will privately keep the prospect from seeing a number of competitor videos? I'm reading it exactly as he wrote it. <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. Uh, will privately, if you, if you upload the video privately, will it keep the prospect from seeing competitor videos? Yes. No. No? No, no, no. So the privately just means that only that user can see your specific video, only the people who have the, the specific URL. It essentially means you can't find it by searching for it on YouTube. You have to find that video by Bye. having the exact URL. Got but it. that's a setting to protect you, the dealer. It is. Uh, it has no impact on the experience of the user. So the user doesn't know if the video is, is private or not. I see. Okay, Tony, thank you. Great question. All right, next question comes to you from Tim. He is requesting, can we get the video example sent to us? Although I don't know which video example he's asking yeah, about. It, it might be Sansone. Okay. Um, it's actually downloaded in the handout. Well, the handout is in a PDF, so they can't play oh, the live PDF. videos. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if but this if you one can, is private. If you, if you can get me, oh, is it private? I was going to say, if you can get me the link, I can, you know, forward it to everyone. Yeah. Outwards. I don't think it is private. I think it's public. Ooh, that yeah, would be I nice. Will, I, will, I will send you the link. I have the link, so I will send you the link. Yes, is the answer to that question. Okay. <laughs> During the show? <laughs> You want me to do it now? Yeah. You um, can still see my screen, right? They, um, yes, you can freeze your screen if you'd like. So I that just they don't want you guys reading my emails. Shot, stop showing screen. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right, that works. All right, so um, uh, next, oh, we had a couple people that asked, I can't find the slide deck. I don't see a slide deck handout. Okay, so what you have to do is go to your GoToWebinar interface, which is uh, for me, it's on the right-hand side of my screen, and it shows everything about the GoToWebinar that we're on right now. So you want to look for the section that's called Handouts. Click on the little plus sign next to where it says Handouts, and it'll expand. And in there, you will see one very valuable handout, which is that slide deck. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so, because we're going to be closing out this webinar pretty shortly. All right? People are like, I can't believe you had somebody from Chile on here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. All right. Um, um, I emailed you the link to the Sansone Mazda video. Ah, okay. I will try and pull that out while you are answering your next question. All right. Mm, this one comes in from Philip. Philip says, any thoughts or suggestions on changes in the Google search algorithm for 2016 regarding optimization for pop-ups in mobile sites? Mm, yeah, this is a big one. So what he's talking about is Google has just come out and said that sites that have mobile pop-ups will be penalized in the Google algorithm. Um, 
first thought I had when I heard this announcement was, oh no, our dealers who have live chat. Um, live chat is not considered a pop-up. So sites that will, will be penalized are sites like, uh, the best example I can think of are like those clickbait news sites where like you're trying to read news articles and it's like all these ads are flying in your face. So that policy most specifically um, applies to sites that have pop-up advertising. So if you have a pop-up chat window that says like we're here live to help, you will not be impacted by that. So um, it is probably not a change that will impact dealership websites in 2016 or 17. So it's a way for us to kind of make bad user experience sites where you're getting a thousand pop-ups. Um, it's a way for us to make them a little bit less relevant in the search results because, again, we're obsessed with making the user happy and those pop-ups do not make users happy. I, I hear you. Okay, well, Philip already wrote and he said, oh, okay, awesome. That was my biggest concern. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much for the great question, Philip. If you got another one, we're, we're winding down. We just have a handful or less of questions left. So uh, if you have a question for Kelly McNearney, hurry up and get it in. We'll be closing out the show soon. All right, um, Brad wrote in, will there be a replay? I got to this meeting late. Brad. Listen to me. You can't do that anymore, all right? <laughs> we start at 12 o'clock Eastern Time every Thursday. But I will tell you this. Yes, I will be sending out a link to this recording a few hours after this webinar closes. It's also going to be posted online within 24 hours at dealeron.com. You can view all of our webinar recordings and even sign up for our upcoming webinars as well, all right? Thank you very much, Brad. All right, next question comes to you, Kelly, from Brooke. Brooke says, we pay someone to do our SEM. Not sure if you have any insight on this, but shouldn't they be the ones to tell us about these cool extensions and messaging things and do it automatically for us? Because this is the second time I've heard of these, but they haven't changed our paid ads, not once. Kelly? <laughs> oh, I love getting dealer agencies in trouble. Um, yes. Your SEM agency should definitely be making you aware. And they should be using the, them, right? And they should be using them. I bet. I bet they're on to do that. I don't see why we wouldn't. <laughs> um, yes. The, the change to extensions, extensions having a big impact on where you show in the search engine results page, is not new. That's, um, I think that's a 2015 thing, actually, when that happened. So your dealer agency should definitely know. Um, if they're an SEM expert, if they're just a web page provider, they wouldn't necessarily know that, but if, you're their S if they are your SEM provider and, and you say that they are, then, then yes, they should know that these ad extensions are important, not only because your click-through rate is going to go up and your cost is going to go down, but the algorithm is actually fueled by those extensions now. So time for a, a firm chat with the agency to say, we just heard directly from Google the impact extensions can have. What extensions do you have in my campaign? Yes. And then yes. have them watch them go, um, and then you'll get extensions. So then everyone wins. I mean, I hope so. I mean, I know, you know, we at Dealeron, we work very closely with our good friends over at Google to make sure that we are as up-to-date as possible to make our Google choices, you know, the best that they could possibly be and the most effective. So. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just throwing that out there. Hey, Kelly, could could you please turn on your um your screen again? Oh, I um, can. We just have a, a couple last questions, and then we're going to be getting to uh, close out the webinar for everyone. All right, okay. Brooke, we hope that helped you out. Good luck, my friend. Uh, next question, last couple of questions. Next question comes in from Randy. Randy says, so like a JavaScript that fires when clicked on and it opens a new small window that plays a YouTube video, would that be considered a pop-up? No, because it was clicked on. So anything that the user initiates is not considered a pop-up. Randy, I hope that helps you out. I know that made you probably pretty happy. <laughs> All right, last question. Oh, Randy says thanks. All right, last question comes in from Mike. Mike says, Kelly, how important is schema markup going to be in 2017 to Google? Mike, I have no idea what schema markup means. 
gonna Google it. You're gonna Google it. <laughs> you know what the markup is? This happens to me all I'm just, the time. I'm right just now. a webinar goddess. I don't know anything about schema markup either. <laughs> well, the top result was schema markup Google. So clearly there's something I need to do some research on. <laughs> Mike, is this the answer you were hoping for? My confused expression and then relying on the internet <laughs> for an answer? Um, he's smiling. <laughs> By the way, this was the same Mike. Who stumped you before, by the way. <laughs> we didn't give you the other question. Mike, Mike, you're killing me. Mike is a okay, killer so over I here. Have, He's a spoiler. Mike, you know what? Mike is a digital master, and um, he's, he's loving the fact that he's embarrassing me right now. Oh, Brad wrote in something to help you out. Are you a developer, Mike? Are you a... Yeah, this is a developer question. I don't know. Mike. Okay, Brad wrote in, schema, schema markup is code, semantic vocabulary that you put on your website to help the search engines return more informative results for users. If you've ever used rich snippets, you'll understand exactly what schema markup is all about. And then Marty wrote in, mazel tov on your wedding, Kelly. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Marty's my friend. Okay. All right. This is, you know what? She's going to do some research on this, and the next time she webinars with me, she's going to be all over that schema markup thing, all right? I will. I really will. <laughs> you know, your honesty is breathtaking. <laughs> thank you so much for that. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for your great questions. Um, and Randy wrote in, yes, it has product information, and your hosting should be up to date with this. You can also put it in your in if you have access to H head section of your site as well as the coding. Good to know. Yeah, sounds like developer coding uh, 4A. All right, not so much digital advertising 4A. Not as much. Not as much. But Mike, thank you so much. You have given us lots to think about and we appreciate you. <laughs> I do. We appreciate we you. Do. Now, not to be outdone, we had a lot of people who wrote in and said, thank you for the awesome webinar. So, Kelly, once again, you have not disappointed. You have rocked this webinar, and you have let these dealers know all of the cool, awesome, free, amazing things that Google is offering them to rock 2017. And for that, we give you our undying affection and gratitude. Thank you very much, Kelly McNearney. Sure. Thank you all. Thank you, Aliana, and thank you, attendees. Thank you. Um, yes. He says, you guys are great. We know that. Oh, great job. Ooh, great job, guys. Thank you. All right. Awesome. I want to remind the audience, yes, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference. Hey, share it with some friends and colleagues. We would love that. It's also going to be posted online at dealeron.com slash webinars within the next 24 hours. Go to that website, dealeron.com slash webinars. Click on the link on the right-hand side for on-demand webinars. And from there, you can access any of our past webinars. You can also... Uh, yeah, register for some upcoming webinars too. And at the conclusion of this webinar, in just a moment, you're going to get a short survey. Only three questions, my friends. Please fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want to know what you thought of today's presentation. So tell us what you think. We would love the feedback. Also, Dealeron is going to be exhibiting and presenting at the upcoming NADA convention. Awesome booth. I think we even have an open bar at our booth. We have for the last three years. I don't see any reason why we would stop that. So check out our booth, booth 1161. I'm going to be there. I'd love to meet you in person. We'll take some pictures. We'll share them on social. It'll be great. And while you're getting your NAD on, please check out the speaking sessions from these awesome Dealer On executives. Hope to see you there in NOLA. And invitations will be going out tomorrow for the last Dealer On webinar of the year. That's right. And it is called The Amazing SEM and SEO Show, starring the beard and the hair. For the final Dealer On webinar of 2016, only the best would do. Dealer On's very own Greg Gifford, the beard, and Sean Rains, the hair, will close out this year's webinar series with a high-energy dual presentation on SEO and SEM.
They recently presented in tandem at the Driving Sales Executive Summit and the crowd went wild. So this outstanding one hour webinar is in a fast paced game show format where these two experts will alternate back and forth with detailed answers to five critical SEM questions and five crucial SEO questions. Attendees of this unique presentation will learn the latest updates in both AdWords and Google's organic search results. This webinar will have everything you need to know about SEO and SEM to rock the new year. Sean will cover PPC, explaining how to optimize your digital marketing accounts and hold your vendors accountable. Greg will share the latest info on local SEO, what's changed, what's important, and how to optimize your site for better local visibility. This is an hour of automotive awesomeness you just can't afford to miss, let me tell you. So mark your calendars as we end this year's Dealer on Webinar series on a high note, register now for the amazing SEM and SEO show starring the beard and the hair. And don't forget, Dealer On's weekly webinars are held Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars and our topics, feel free to contact me directly. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio, and I'd love to hear from you. I'm everywhere online. You can track me down. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, I'm on all the automotive social networks, or you know what? You can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on another webinar in DealerOn's continuing education series. Take care, and we will see you next Thursday.